Hello and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekender Show. Hope everyone's had a fantastic week so far and you're enjoying this nice weather. It's getting warmer as we go along throughout the day. You can see that, can't it? And tomorrow should be at least 20, 21 degrees. Could be higher, whatever you're based. So enjoy it, lap it up. And if you've got grassroots football, you know what the message is going to be from ourselves. Please, whatever you are, respect continues. It wasn't just the awareness weekend in April, where the PGMOL, the Football League, you name it, every governing body support us, as well as the PFA. So, um, what more could we ask for? As well as grassroots football, everyone adhered to what we were trying to do and keep our referees within the game, especially in the grassroots level, because they don't have any support really, do they? They go out there, young referees as well, remember, They've taken the course, they've gone out there, and they're hoping that they can just get on with the game, referee the kids, without any animosity from the sideline referees. That's what we named them, we nicknamed them, it's sticking, it's getting everywhere now, you've seen it now. Please no more sideline referees, and what we mean by sideline referees are the referees who have not taken the course, the referees who tell the referee who has taken the course, all about how they should do things, what's right and what's wrong in their eyes. They haven't got the whistle, but they want to use the whistle. Imagine if we had all sideline referees and each one of them had a, a whistle. And for every decision made, they blew that whistle. It would be total mayhem, wouldn't it? Confusion. Imagine the kids listening to that. Offside, no it wasn't. Free kick, no it wasn't. Everyone has their own opinion. And that goes for football, that goes for life in general. <clears throat> we all make mistakes, especially referees. But they all stand up and miss, well, especially, no. They all stand up and admit to make the mistake. They do at the end of the game. They're only human, just like ourselves, like you. How many, how many mistakes a day do you make? It goes without saying, doesn't it? It really does. You know, you've got to stand back and leave the referees to do their job. They're only human, and 99.9% .9 of them now are youngsters, aren't they? Just leaving school, 14 years of age, and trying to learn a new trade. Some of them may not have liked football, not played football. I know plenty who have played football, still play football, and referee. But some will admit that they weren't that good at playing the game, so they wanted to do something else, because they love the game. So why take that away from them? Why as adults do you want to take that away from them? Because they're only kids the same as your kids who are playing football. You've got to remember that. It is safeguarding. Believe me, I've done enough courses over the last few weeks to know about safeguarding. Dear me, we need to protect the referees. Forget that the day when you go to a football match, just encourage your child and others around them. Because that's what kids want. You know, if kids are better than your child and your child's better than their child, all treat them as one. You've got to. They all love encouragement. That is the difference. Kids love it. I hate when you hear some of the parents turn around and they're all bragging, that's another five-year-old, yeah. How much is that now? 50 quid, dear me. I don't think <coughs> that should be brought in to grassroots football. It should be stomped out. Because even though other parents laugh at it, the majority of them don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. Paying a child for every goal scored. What, what is that? What is that? Obviously, one thing, you've got loads of money. You're not short of money. And the other thing is, you just like to brag and encourage the child. I don't think, you know, I always say you reward good behaviour, not goal scoring. I think... You have to take a back seat on that one. Don't offer your child, please, money for scoring goals. And I know there's loads out there that still do it, and you're probably nodding your head to me and you're saying, oh, that goes on with our team every week. But let's hear your thoughts on it. Do you, are you one of those parents who offer the child £5, £10 for every goal that they score? They could score six in a game. Oh, you're bragging as if it's nothing. Let me know, maladontextaline.com. Add me as a friend on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
all the social network sites. It's my pet hate that. It really is. So if you've got football, we know you're all preparing now. Summer leagues are coming, tournaments, thick and fast. Are you one of these managers who prepare, don't have a rest, go straight into the winter league after the summer, after tournaments? Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's your life. Grassroots football. Again, let me know. Maladontextheline.com Want to hear it, want to hear your thoughts. Or are you a manager who likes to have a break? Some leagues like to have a break as soon as it's finished. They'll get on with it, yet they'll get the teams in and then they'll go and have their little break. Maybe a holiday, maybe some family time, that's all it is. But as managers, coaches, do we still annoy the league secretaries, the fixture secretaries, the referees? We do. Are you a referee who just doesn't have a break? Week in, week out, referee, summer league, tournaments, getting ready for the winter league. Again, get in touch, let us know. Do you have a break? You must have a break. But I think that a lot of managers out there, coaches, have their team. And I know kids swap about uh, tournaments at summer leagues because they go and play for someone else. That's how it works and then they'll go back to their team again on the following season. But... Is there some managers out there who don't want those children to go back? Glory hunters. We know there's loads of coaches out there, managers, who just want to win, 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 win at all costs. We know that. They want to keep the kids. Are you a manager who goes in the summer league and tournaments just because you're worried about someone poaching your children away from your team to go in their team? That happens all the time, apparently. Still goes on. Has it happened to you? Are you preparing to take someone else's child to go to another team? We've got it on the sevens that's coming there now. And honestly, it's a funny story. Yeah, as we built them, another team has been saying, you're taking our players. And I'm getting some feedback on that one now. And it's funny because one's my grandson and my son is being friends with each and every one of those parents with their children since they were kids. So he's putting his son into my team, which is my grandson, and they've all grown up together and bringing the kids along. And the parents are laughing because some are accusing my son of taking their children away, but they haven't, they've just followed. This is what happens. And that's a difference. You might say that story, I'll go on about it even more. But you'll see these kids and the new kids will come to us right the way through. And I know how grassroots football works. Once the kids sign for academies, go elsewhere, you have to be ready to bring in other players. Well, that's fine by me because we want Don't Cross the Line to be a development club. Let the kids come in, enjoy the football. If they go and sign for someone, fantastic. We've done our job. That's the way I look at grassroots football. If a child wants to leave and go to another team, let them leave, bring someone else in. That's grassroots football. Don't fight it. Don't scream about it. The kids, and sometimes, okay, it's the parents, glory hunters, we know that. But if the kids want to leave, let them leave. Don't fight it, just get on with it. And that's what I used to do going back many, many years ago. You can ask our kids, they stayed with us, not many left, because they were treated right. There's a difference as well in grassroots football. You're a good coach, you develop kids. That's what it's about, no matter who it is. It's lovely to see them win things, it is. If they don't win things, it's also lovely to see them turn up with a smile on their faces. And that's the way, again, grassroots football should be. That's the way I want it to be. I want to rebuild this club. When I say rebuild it, I want to... Enhance it. Let's say there's a difference, a uni club that we're doing, and we're doing it a different way. The good thing about it, we've got a massive start on everything that we do. Now look at all these. I'm going to show you these now. We want to support everything that happens within our communities as well as grassroots football. We want to teach the kids, develop the kids, but we want to also give them that message. We want them to respect the adults in the future, other players around them, other teams, and everyone, the committees, the whole lot, especially the referees. So when our kids come to the team, it'll be codes of conduct, they'll have up, we'll have our own 
and they'll all be adhering to them as well as the mums and dads and the coaches as well. We're all big one or one big happy family. Now if you look, these are the posters, you're probably seeing them around the grounds. Don't bully the ref. This is what it's all about. You can see the ref, someone pointed to me and said, well, why is it a female referee? You know, what are you trying to say there? It's not, it's just a poster. It's just passing a message on. It could be, there's two males, okay. It could be sexist, you're saying, it's not. This does happen. It's fact, we all know it. You've seen it, you've heard it. It's nothing to do that with portraying just a young female referee who gets bullied. It's young male referees. Just look at social media. You know, so we could have a team of young referees there, couldn't we? To have a male there, kneeling down, whatever it is. But it means nothing. It's just a message to get across to the football family, grassroots football, that sideline referees are not required when you have a referee, official referee, in the middle. So, they're the posters. Don't bully the ref. So whatever you're out and about at football, no ref, no game, remember that one. That's us. You see that? The respect. It's all about good behaviour. We want you sideline referees to take that title away from yourselves and become extra special parents. Mums and dads, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters. That's what we want. Encouragement. Remember that when you go out and about. Now the message as well is very strong here. Because we all know what happens within the communities and we know what happens and what we, in, in grassroots, not just in communities, all over the country, not Merseyside, it's everywhere. And we all know, you read it, you see it on the news, day in, day out, and we hear it. And our local play, papers and our radio stations portray these messages when something drastic happens, dramatic happens, and it involves our children. So a message there with one of our signs on top of there, you'll see that is obviously... Don't cross the line, you can see it there. No more guns, please, no more guns. Keep our children safe, that's what it's about. No more, we don't want that. So what we want you to do, kids, kids, remember football, boot it, don't shoot it. This is what we wanna do. Give you that message, a strong message. Anyone entices you towards it, walk away. Tell your coach, tell your manager, tell your welfare officer that you do not want to be involved in gun crime or knife crime. Walk away from that one. You want to play your football, we don't want gangs. Boot it, don't shoot it, drop it. That's what we want. And we are planting the message early. Don't cross the line. You see these? That's what we're all about. These little cards we've told you, don't cross the line, are planting the message early in grassroots. That's what it's about. Now you see some of these logos and these banners and badges and what have you. Well, we are proud to announce that Rob Lindsay, the band's band, is our official supplier. Yes, we'll do these logos. See that? I know. I haven't ironed this one on, no, I've got these printed because they're special from... The PFA towards the Premier League match officials. But Rob has come up with the idea simple, iron on, save a fortune. If you can't, if you just want a t shirt, then go to mal at don'textline.com. Cost you about £15 plus postage and packing. Um, Give us a shout on that one. But Rob can also do t shirts if you want, and then you iron your own on, and he'll give you instructions, no problem whatsoever. So there's your respect. Also does don't cross the line, and he's our official merchandise supplier, the badge man. Remember that, and also you know about our heart of gold, and we do the normal heart, and also the football heart. Absolutely brilliant, the fantastic. What more could we ask for? These are off the badge man. There's a smaller side version of the respect as well, and I'm sure. If you get in touch with Rob, the badge man, well, he'll do you the good deal. Just tell him you know Mal, and I'm sure he will sort it out, no problem. He'll always throw a freebie in, I know Rob. But, fantastic. Does all the Don't Cross the Line merchandise. We're moving on, on big style things, 
as we go along. We really are. We're going to try and come up with more ideas. Now we've got the kids team. Now we've got TXTL, or it's, it's Club TXTL, FC Lions, under sevens. They'll be kicking off, hopefully, if we get the go-ahead and our application is successful in a league. And they'll be kicking off in September. And we've also applied for our affiliation from the Liverpool County FA. So we have to take out insurance as well. I think that costs around about £120. It's dear. But I suppose it has to be paid. So um, I think you can get that through the County FA or you look for your own. So I'll be ringing my insurance company next week to see what sort of price we can get and to cover the kids. Failing that, we'll go to the Liverpool County FA Insurance. It co covers you up to 10 million, I think it is. So, um, hey ho, it's a lot of money to pay out for kids' football. Um, and obviously, we'll find out exactly what the kids are covered for so we can tell all the parents. Do we believe in it? I don't know. It's probably good if the kids do get injured and they're suffering and they can't play football for a while then we'd look into whatever they can claim for. So I suppose it's a good thing. And what they say as well, public liability, it covers you for that. I really did think that whatever you play, if you went to something like Jeffrey Humble or Hub, they are covered by public li liability and first aiders as well. They have to be. So we look into that thing. If they're already covered, then let's see. I'm going to ask the question there today as well. Take some notes and find out exactly what kids are covered for because um, I want to try and keep some of the money down as well. I want to work with grassroots football. I want to look at my pet hate as well. And you might have heard me. I do support work. I've paid something like £55 for my DBS check through work. Uh, safeguarding, new neighbour, doing a million courses. So we've got that. And then you go to the likes of your local county FAs and you have to take another one out because you haven't got theirs. Volunteer costs you about 10 50 probably gone up this year. Now, I don't understand and I'm going to look into it and I want to look into it and surely everyone's on my side here why you need another DBS when it's exactly the same information on there. I don't know what goes on here. I really, really don't because you get the same police check. There's no difference. So why do you have to, whenever you go, take a different DBS out? One should cover all. Simple as that. That's what it should do. But it doesn't seem to. Anyway, let me check on all that because I want to try and save as many managers money out there as I possibly can. And I want to look into that. I think it's scandalous that you have a DBS. And same goes with first aid that you have to go and do. Another course just to, I don't know, suffice someone else. Watch this space, leave it with me, let's see what we can do. But anyway, in the meantime, you've got your football, we know you have. We've got all kinds of things going on that you can see we don't cross the line. Even that, you know, our red cards, look at that, you're off. You're off if you don't support your referee. Don't be a sideline referee. You want to be a referee, go to the local county FA, put your name down, do the course, get your payment and enjoy it. And take the stick like everyone else does, rather than give it. Are you a giver or do you give it? Anyway, there we go. We've got a minute left of our show. What have we got to say? If you've been to the FA Cup final, let's just hope that you've come home safe and well because that's what football should all be about. No animosity. We're going to give a real update on the FA Cup tomorrow, or if we are back tomorrow, because I've got a massive, busy week back to work. And as you may have heard and put out on social media, I've got an operation at the end of the month for a hernia that I've been waiting for two years for. And then I've got my work cut out because I've got to get super fit and hopefully get ready for the skydive and a walk, 85 mile walk, 85 mile walk over three days at Hadrian's Wall. So wish me luck, let's hope we can get there and let's hope I can keep myself super, super, super fit to get that done as well. In the meantime, we've come to the end of our show. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got anything to say, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me, Mal, 
at don'txtheline.com and you can support our hearts of gold. We'll speak to you tomorrow night. Have a great evening. Enjoy your football games, Premier League, grassroots game, cup games, summer leagues, whatever you're playing in, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night, God bless.